Jared here, and I'm going to show you a little something that I like to call through the mail. Key repair, or ignition repair. I have a couple of Honda ignition cylinders. This one is completely as it would be on the vehicle, just not on the vehicle. You know, it would sit something like this. The key would go in. It would be able to turn. You'd be able to start your car. And you'll be able to pull it back out. Sometimes it break or a customer loses their key. And we have to break it down and fix it. This is the Accurator or Lock Tech, whatever. I uh, forget the by Lock Tech, I think, but they make Accurators also. Um, this is the roll pin removal tool. And this makes it to where you don't have to drill and you can reuse the roll pin that you extract. I got a friend, or not really a friend, uh, an associate named Andrew McCauley, who uh, admins a Facebook page I used to admin with him. And uh, on his YouTube, I believe it's one of his most popular videos. Shout out, Andrew. But he drills. It's not something I want to do. Step one is to locate the roll pin, which would be in this hole right here. And it's hard to see with the lighting. But you stick in a nice pick. And you want to kind of flare it out a little bit. Make sure it's centered. Just to ensure that the roll pin is pushed as, uh, as far forward as possible. Okay. You uh inside this this uh kit will come with a table to show what type of ignition you have. I'm currently dealing with an Accord ignition, which is a type one. So we're gonna fit it up. As you see it, it'll It'll slide on and seat directly over the roll pin. That's the roll pin hole. You can see how it all lines up pretty well and fits together nicely. And there are pre existing holes that other components are mounted up to uh, the ignition cylinder with. And these would be them. As you can see on the one that's still put together screw holes are needed to keep everything nice and tight and together. But you put this on and you made up the black screw to where it needs to go, the red to where it needs to go, and if you can't thread them all the way through or securely, the kit comes with plastic washers that you can use uh, to gain more traction or a better fitting. What this tool does so well is it extracts the roll pin by grabbing it. And it grabs it by using a flared hollow tube. And essentially what that flared hollow tube does is it fits around the circumference of the roll pin and we will pinch it closed so that it will secure that roll pin and we can just thread it right out. But you have to take your flared roll pin extractor and put it inside of a sleeve which comes with the kit in your hollow screw assembly. You fit these together. And you'll see how it's starting to, to work. You see this? Okay. So, I need to put this in over here. And what this does, this screw pushes against the ignition lock uh, cylinder 
and it forces the roll pin as far this way out as possible. That way it makes your job just a little easier. And whenever you're threading this in, it's not pushing the roll pin back through. So you want to get that nice and tight. Okay. When you put in this tool and you start to thread it in, you want to make sure that it is over your roll pin. You want to give it just a few little turns. You want to make sure you're seated. And you want to tap it. that it's seated over that roll pin and it has a nice grip and then we're going to thread the brass screw until it stops and it'll stop you know it'll come to a nice positive stop there it is now theoretically you only want to twist this a little bit done everything right, which I hope we have, this should extract the roll pin. We are going to relieve pressure on the plug. And now we're going to unthread this. And there's the ignition cylinder freeing up because we have successfully extracted the retaining roll pin. You see? So now what's left is we remove our mounting fixture and screws. Make sure you keep everything together in the kit. Your kit will also come with a, a pick that will help you get out your uh, tamper resistant bolts that secure this to your vehicle. <clears throat> this is an essential tool to have if you are an automotive mechanic or a locksmith. And shout out to my mechanics, don't be afraid to call a locksmith and offer us a bulk, you know, uh, supply of this job. I quote pretty high for this kind of work because the Honda dealership customers, I hope you're listening to, uh, the Honda dealership will simply take this out completely and replace it with a new part and they're going to charge you like $1,200 and you're going to end up having a different key for your ignition and your door, okay? Whereas if you call a locksmith who has done this work before, he can recreate the key lost or he can repair your ignition that's not turning, and you will have that same key that you always had, except the problem will be fixed, okay? So now you see, this ignition cylinder is not yet freed. You just simply have to push or fiddle with uh, steering wheel. Whoops. And out it comes. <laughs> I just dropped the whole thing. But And there you see that uh, this is now disassembled. Well, broke down. It's broke down. Um, and we have our ignition cylinder. You see? And we even have a nice and pretty code. A little key code right there. If you can see it in that delicate white ink that they like to print it in. Our key code appears to be K719. So, all we'd have to do is break this poppy down 
and replace the damaged components inside of it and repair it. So what we do from that point is we repair it. We can put it back together and then we can reuse this roll pin right here. And it'll all fit back together nicely. I've taught myself a particular set of skills that allow me to do jobs that others cannot uh, in ways that they cannot. If you mail me your lock, not only can I repair it, but I don't need your vehicle to program in new keys. So if you mail me your lock, I want you to fix it, and I too can program keys directly into the immobilizer without plugging into the OBD port. We're going to pop the top off. You see a device or the circuit board right here and our target device is this doohickey and I'm going to quickly try to spot its mask. And there's a 24C04, 24C04E prom device. So I'm going to type that in, C04, enter, and it has our dip settings. And we just got to confirm those on our programming unit, which I just did. So what I will show you now is just a quick EEPROM of this Honda that I'm going to rebuild for somebody. I've already got the ignition cylinder out. We have the key code from the side, which was K719. And so now I'm just going to quickly grab this guy up, and sit down so I can better control my environment. Maybe I'll get you guys a better view. You'll see how quick this is. Okay. So I'm just gonna push onto the target device with my adapter. And I shouldn't need to clean it since I'm using my AccuTouch. I'm going to hit 5 to get to the editor. I'm going to hit G and read it in. And it didn't confirm because I wasn't putting adequate pressure onto it. Bear with me. Try it again. There we go. We have a verified file. Did that one handed pretty easy. Okay, so we have the verified file from here, which is basically all the key data that's ever been stored. Anytime a key has been added or erased, it's been noted in this binary. So I'm going to hit A, and I'm going to do, since this is my roll pin video, I'm going to do roll pin what is that? Seven letters? One dot bin. Since it's the first read, we're going to save it in a defined range. And I'm going to back out and quickly load up my MVP, my most valuable programmer, <laughs> my VVDI2. Gotta love the VVDI2. So we're going to plug in our parameters of Honda. We're going to find something with 24C04. We're going to load my roll pin. Um, I need to go to my EEPROM folder, most likely. Here's our roll pin. And there we are. We have three keys in the system. And, uh, Let's find a transponder. I'll show you real quick. So I'm going to repair the ignition. And they wanted a, a spare key. 
Here's one that is not cut. This is called a shell. It has an empty tray right now. What I'll do is take a blank Phillips 46 transponder and I'm going to put this bugger inside of this uncut key which I will eventually cut to code. And when I cut this key to code it will turn all locks that the ignition came off of. Okay, so I'm just going to put it in there. See? It's now embedded. I'm going to stick it into VVDI2. And I'm going to add key 4. Now you see this key will be recognized by the vehicle's immobilizer and it will prompt us to resave this file because it is a new file. It has added key 4 into the binary file now. So we're going to put roll pin 2, enter, and I'm going to go ahead and load it. Roll pin 2. Now you see we have a key 4. because it's right here. There's only one last step aside from repairing and uh, cutting this key now for the customer which I'll do on my own time. Last step will be to load up AR32 again. Which I will. Go to uh, directory of files and I'm going to find my roll pin 2 file and I'm going to F3 to program it. Grab my immobilizer real quick. Make sure my pins are lined up and touching. I have it indexed to pin 1 and such. You promise so easy you can do it one handed. And I'm going to hit P. And we have it programmed and verified now. So there it is. This now holds key 4. Okay. So now, whenever this customer gets this lock back, they actually lost all their keys. Now whenever they get their ignition cylinder back, this key will not only turn it, but this key will start their car. And not only that, this key will also unlock their door and their glove box. Because unlike the dealer, I did not simply take out a faulty component and replace it. I took the faulty component and I repaired it and then I added a key so anywho I hope you learned something from me if you want to learn more feel free to fly out to me or fly me out to you and I will teach you whatever you want to know whatever I can offer you at least Jared Garza with Como Lock Shop signing off have a good day